Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. This is your first visit. My name is Peter Knowles and I live in a classic wooden motor cruiser in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. And again, no, I'm not there right now. I'm actually cruising a Desolation Sound in the coast of British Columbia uh, aboard my friend's boat, MV Zephyrus, and uh, we're having a fabulous time. Uh, here we are in uh, Refuge Harbor. As usual, we have to jump back in time and uh, pick it up where we left off in Powell River. Seems an eternity ago. All right. Well, we're finally leaving uh, Powell River after an extended stay again uh, because of pretty severe wind. Now it's down just enough this morning, but just. We're now going far, about two and a half hours up to Lund. This particular end of the marina here in Powell River is not very well exposed to uh, southern and southwest not, wind. Not very well protected. Right! <laughs> Sometimes when I'm talking, I just words come out and I don't even think of what I'm saying. Not very well protected to southwest uh, with a very long fetch and uh, as you can see, that's what we've got rolling in and have for the last three days. Pretty lumpy. All right. Back into a slippy Lund. A bit windy. And we've arrived in beautiful Lund, which is the last major village um, going north. After that, it's just little hamlets and such. Uh, this is such a cute little town, um, sort of a bowl of a harbor surrounded by, there's a bakery, there's some cute little restaurants, uh, there's an old hotel, which you can't see from here. Anyway, really a, a funky little spot. And we have some good friends here as well, which is great. So get to spend some time with them. I think the bakery and a cinnamon bun is in order. One of the most wonderful features of MV Zephyrus is this incredible McMurray windlass built in Seattle, I believe. Um, all cast bronze, um, you know, great big uh, motor in it. Apparently the motor is out of a uh, Ford eight end tractor. Um, it's been great. Uh, I had some grounding issues on it in the past, but I've sorted that out. But the only issue remaining with it is that it has a clutch, which is really neat. So you can, technically you could loosen this hand wheel. Let me bring you in a little bit. Yeah, so you could loosen this hand wheel and the gypsy would freewheel and let the anchor go down. Now that's not the way I've ever used this uh, because the motor is reversible and it's so much easier to just Here, a little um, uh, fiber, or I'd, I'll, I'll find out what it is when I have a look at it, is slipping. And as a result, the windlass slips under high load, and uh, that's not very nice. So uh, I'm gonna try and get the disc out and see if it's got a glaze on it. Anyway, I wanna have a look at it. You know, I can't turn this angle actually, because it is so, so tight. Fortunately, it has a nut on it, and uh, I've secured the proper uh, socket for it. But before I do that, I want to make sure I secure the anchor because as I said, this will freewheel. Now the truth is it probably wouldn't fall out and it would only go down about 10 feet. But anyway, let's see if I can get this off. That was very easy. <laughs> so I'm going to spin it right off. Well, I can't. Look at that. What they do, they put a stopper on here. I didn't realize the way this was made. I have to get a standard screwdriver. Uh, this is to keep it all from falling it right off when you're operating the windlass. Let me go get a screwdriver. All right then, well, so to be honest, part of me is tempted to just take this big breaker bar and uh, tighten this up so much that it won't slip anymore, but that's not really a repair or even analysis. So I'm going to go to the trouble of taking this all apart and having a look at the way it's made. Partly because I love the thing and uh, I'd like to understand it a little bit better. So this should come right off. Gosh, don't drop this in the ocean. There we go, that is heavy. So let's get the disc off. 
and it has a key so we don't want to lose that key and this is well glazed I'm telling you this is shiny 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 so I'm gonna clean up both the plate and um, I'm gonna scuff up this friction disc a little bit and I think we should be in good shape very nice nice to see also there's lots of material here left this clutch is not uh, do any time for replacement which is good because I have no idea where I would get this okay let's go get a little bit of sandpaper okay amazingly there isn't a scrap of sandpaper board hard to believe the only thing I found that's the least bit abrasive is this super cool abrasive wheel that went in my grinder which would make quick work of both of these surfaces however in this beautiful little marina in Lund there's no chance I'm running a grinder so let's see if I can just use this by hand to tidy this up a bit. I think this will work just fine. That's interesting. I didn't expect that. I don't know why I didn't. That's the way a clutch should work. So anyway, let's clean up the bronze sides first. This is a slow process. Okay, so I've cleaned up both um, of the plates and the disc in between, and I think this is in pretty good shape. Uh, for those of you who are concerned, this is not asbestos. Um, I would recognize the smell. Uh, it's some sort of phenolic material with chunks of bronze in it, or brass possibly. Anyway, uh, there's no risk there. So, let's just give this a little bit of a wipe down and reassemble it. Probably my only disappointment with this windlass is the size of this teeny tiny little key. Uh, considering the force that has to be exerted through it, I am a little surprised how small that is. Anyway, okay, let's... Uh, I'd like to turn this up a bit. There we go. Let's drop that key in there. Um, Peter, 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 Peter. Now, I'm going to tighten this quite tight with the uh, power bar uh, because, as I mentioned before, it's not very likely I'm ever going to release the anchor by releasing this brake even though it's quite elegant that you could do that uh, I'd like to think I could just tighten this enough like that to tighten the clutch but because I want to be sure it's tight let's give it an extra little tweak I'm gonna say that is just fine okay I'm gonna call that a repair well done I just glanced over the top of the boat over to the fuel dock. You guys can't see it perhaps, but right there is an extraordinary boat. It looks like a, we're gonna go check it out. Well, folks, this is a custom Grenfell built in 1953, same year as my boat. The current owner is the son of the original owner, and he's owned it for 44 years. Unbelievable. Completely unbelievable. Curved windshields. This door to the command deck bridge is curved. Can you see that? A lazy gal. Absolutely incredible. All right then, well that is clearly the most significant wooden boat I've ever seen. <laughs> Just incredible. Oh 
now this is pretty civilized. This is Nancy's Bakery, which is a great little local, well, all kinds of stuff. I can tell you they have some fantastic torture in here as well. Just perfect. Our stop over in London has been an absolute pleasure. I had a chance to uh, edit and upload an episode for you. And so now this is the last, as I said, uh, major port town um, before we head into Desolation proper. Uh, there are a few cute little spots we can go into and get a little bit of provisioning done, but mostly it's the wild Pacific coast from here on. Yeah, let's go. One of my favorite little spots. This is a little pass in behind Otter Island as we work our way over to Predo Haven. It's just a narrow little gap between the rock and I just, I don't know, again I love these cozy little things.
Hello, hello. Visiting around the harbor. Isn't it lovely? Okay. This is Prito Haven, probably the most popular destination in all of Desolation Sound. And yes, even though there are no American boats up here this year, um, it is really full. But you can see why. It's just, just a magical spot. Anyway, we were very fortunate to find a really snug little corner here with a beautiful, beautiful view back out into the sound. And we're going to be joined shortly um, by our friends aboard the, the Chris Craft that you've met before. But more exciting even than that is this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey? <laughs> Another round of barbecued garlic butter barbecued bronze on the... Oh, it's going to be great! Well, hello and welcome to the Beer of the Week. We are in probably the most spectacular spot in all of Desolation Sound. This is Prito Haven, and uh, we're joined here by our good friends, uh, Maurizio and Cecilia, from the uh, motor vessel um, Bianca, the Chris Craft you've seen in several episodes, and they have brought a beverage that they're going to tell you about. When we moved to British Columbia, we yeah. couldn't find any okay. red beer yeah. because that's very rare here. And two days ago, we were in Pender Harbor and found Rickard's Red, which is almost a Montreal Rose, but not totally Montreal Rose. Hey, it's the closest to a proper East Coast uh, red or Rose, uh, like multi amber ale that we've been. So we're right. super stoked that we found Richard's Red at our local BC or no. Um, not the local one. It's a, it, it was the BC liquor store in in Pender Harbor, of all places. Right. Yeah. Pretty cool. So. And but you've been looking for seven years. For seven years. Being an ex-Montrealer, when I yeah. was young, yeah. Rickard's Red was still a craft beer, a micro, and before it was owned by whoever owns it now. And this was incredibly popular because it was incredibly cheap, and they poured it hard and fast in places like the Peel Pub and others. Really. Oh yeah. yeah hard fast pouring locations um and we loved it it was fantastic so should we pour let's pour let's pour yes. let's pour oh yeah now Maurizio, i have a bad reputation with pouring on this channel so would you be kind Cecilia enough Cecilia is the pour master. really is it okay oh, oh, Cecilia, but i, I can right. pull the glass would you like that? oh that's a teamwork <laughs> team effort work. okay all right bearing in mind that we have to get four glasses out of this yes all right oh i'm doing it too fast these it's maybe the glasses Oops. Well, I've tried to blame the glasses in the past, and it seems that uh, those in the know... <laughs> yeah, that would, that, that's a pre professional one. Look right at there. that amber color. I'm going to taste the, take the nasty foamy because I'm used to that. Perfect. Oh, sweet. Very good. Well, cheers, right. and cheers. Uh, welcome to Prito Haven. Thank you. Cheers. A blast from the past. Rick is red. Yeah. Is it as you remember? Yes. Montreal 80s. It's totally. great. I'm, I'm, totally, I'm at the Peel Pub. I'm, yeah, that's fantastic. We we have to um, we have to drink more of this. It's great. It's like yeah. it's not. It's malty. Yeah. And it's not too bitter yeah. like a lot of amber ales tend to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just. It's rich and it's, it's got a lot smooth. of flavor. Yeah. It's not. It's not a lager, which is so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Right? So good. Yum. Okay, folks, um, I need something called Word of the Week. Um, I give away a t-shirt every week, so I haven't thought about it, so I'm hoping one of you can think of a word. Ruse. Ruse? Ruse. It means Ruse. red. Yeah, it means red. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Word of the Week this week is Ruse, which means red in French. I actually thought Rouge did, but anyway, it's all the same. Anyway, oh, I think it's Quebec, it's isn't it? Quebec Maybe it's Quebec. 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 I think it's Quebecois. We're so right. you, you few Quebecois that are watching, uh, you're right up. Uh, you Australians, I think you might have a little more trouble with it. Rus is the word of the week here on the bottle. Is, yeah, it is. is it? Yeah, it's Spell probably it. going to be too blurry. Spell it. R O U S S E. R O U S S E. I'm sorry, folks. It, it wasn't me. Rus. <laughs> you know what to do with it. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Get in there. Just two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes.